Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. Oh, for the love of mirrors. I just am drawn to mirrors when I see them in a thrift store. So I have to wean myself that, oh, that I just don't pick every single mirror up that I see because these are a flipper's dream when it comes to mirrors because between three to ten dollars a piece i can sell mirrors all day long in the 45 55 65 dollar price range so it is a great profit so i seem to always go for the ones that have beveled glass or some detail that is on them but I absolutely love doing mirrors and I always do a large group once we've run out of them in our stash. And how could I pass up these cuties? Look at everything about these two are already so super cute. Just a new paint job is all these two need. I know I shared this flower mirror in a thrift with me. It's about time to get this done. And along with those other two little mirrors, just unique little mirrors, like I said, oh my gosh, mirrors sell really well for me. And they're always in the thrift store in my area. Now this one has a little bit of brokenness, but that's okay for that price. I will pick it up and fix it. And we will be sharing you with you in the video how we fix that. And then just round mirrors are in that homemade beaded mirror. I've done one similar to that. And this was one of those salvaged goods also of a that hands and heart line from Target it was a returned item. Just simply love it. First things first is this is the one that's going to have to sit the longest and let that JB well harden up. So I'm just going to mix. This is a two part so that you have to mix. And then I'm going to apply it to that area clamp it down let it sit and let it sit overnight before i can touch it so we need to get to this one first then this is what it looked like the next day when i came back to it just now it that flower is back on this mirror so who can pass up a brand new mirror just whatever i don't know why our our local Goodwills get Target returns all day long, so I'm always excited when they get a shipment in and I go through it, and there's nothing wrong with this mirror other than I'm going to change the color out. So the easiest prep for me for mirrors is just some of this thrifted contact paper. This is actually Duck Brand contact paper. I like the Duck Brand because it doesn't leave sticky residue behind, so happy to have thrifted items like this. So all I'm doing is sticking it on and cutting around those edges. I may not get perfectly but at least i'm going to get the most part of this mirror covered up so i'm going to be doing the exact same thing with this hand and hearth mirror also it's just the best way it's so hard to get just masking tape in those corners and i know people i'm going to be spray painting these with a can of spray paint and i know you can scrape off of mirrors but the chances are you may scrape the mirror itself the glass itself so i rather just get as much of the surface area covered that i can and most of these mirrors the backs are in good shape they're just a wood color or they're solid in color so i'm just going to put some masking tape so in case any of the paint rolls over onto the side that i can just sand that off and have a nice clean line I wasn't kidding when I said most of these mirrors that I thrifted were 509. Look at this one is 509 with that beautiful bed of the glass. And then this one from the Habitat was $5. And I absolutely love this natural color one. I don't know about you all, but I think sometimes the prep of a piece, taping a piece off, getting it prepped to paint, takes sometimes longer than it does to actually paint the pieces. I got everything taped off it's time to get these clean so i'm just using some of the super clean and a rag just to wipe them on wipe off and make sure that i get any of that grime anything that's left behind that might prevent my paint from sticking and then making sure that they're thoroughly dry before getting them painted you got all these little detailed pieces you want to make sure that there's no no water left behind sometimes i might even get the air compressor and make sure that they're good and dry so unlike the palette frames that I did in another video, I have carried these mirrors into our spray room. The frames themselves were heavy enough for the palette windows, but 
Whew, these have glass and mirror in it, so this is quite an interesting task. Definitely want to make sure you don't have a shirt on that you care about because you I might touch why I'm carrying them in and out. But having a spray room that I don't have to worry about the overspray is such a blessing in a ventilated area. And definitely have a mask on while you're spraying. But spraying these is just the easiest. That way I get all that black into all that detail. And of course having them on this turntable so I can get that 360, get this whole frame sprayed up. So do you ever look at a project going, huh, I started spraying this and I did not want to spray it this way. I usually like to flip items like this that I had need both sides to be covered upside down, but now I'm committed and now I had to spray it the way that it was. These oval frames, once I removed the mirror to get them ready to spray paint and then I started cleaning them, I realized that they, all they needed was a good cleaning and they are good to go. Well, bonus for me. So after getting all those mirrors sprayed up, everything is nice and dry, I'm gonna seal that black paint in using this Rust-Oleum Clear Matte. Just absolutely love the coverage of this, but this stuff is stinky, so make sure you have a ventilated area and that you have a mask on. But you just need something to seal that black paint in. I'm gonna be painting most of these mirrors white, and if I would apply paint over that, just that spray, can of black I would have a gray monkey mess. So many of these mirrors have this beautiful detailing so I'm using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint the white linen chalk paint and just going to town. I should probably invest in a nice chalk brush but I have not yet so I'm just using this cheaper version of a brush that I got at Walmart and just working that paint into paint into all those detailed edges. So now I got my first coat of white on all the mirrors that are going to be white. For this one, since it's metal, I'm going to go in with this Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Spray Paint and Primer. And I'm going to start off the back this time. I'm going to remember my, which way I'm supposed to be going. And I'm working and getting the most coverage from underneath first. If you're wondering what that little black was, that is the screws that hold the mirror and the frame together. When it came to this $5 Habitat mirror, look at that wood. Somebody had actually taken the time to strip paint off and then donated it. Okay, thank you. So I just absolutely love wood is in. Wood is one of those colors that's in right now. So I thought I'm just going to make this wood pop just a little bit more. I'm going to use that watered down Waverly antiquing wax mixture and just make this pop just a little bit more. So the wonderful game of flipping multiple items, always waiting for paint to dry. There's always something else to work on. So I'm going in with some of that truffle chalk paint by Waverly and putting a coat, just dabbing a coat of paint on all these little beads. This, I guess, was a kit piece. I've done a couple of these before. And so I'm just going to go in and dab all those little beads just to make these little beads look a little bit more wooden. A couple of these mirrors, the frames just don't have a lot of detail, so I don't see any need into painting them white. So I'm going to go in and take some 220 sandpaper and distress all those sharp edges. They do have detail, but just not that type of detail. And white mirrors or black mirrors, it doesn't matter which color they are. I We have been blessed that they all sell really well. So I'm just going to go in and show off some of some distressing on the sharp edges. I have been testing out that Rust-Oleum clear coat because polycrylic is twice the price. <laughs> so why not give it a test out? Now I have to say that as I am sanding this because that has that Rust-Oleum clear coat on it, it's a little bit more gummy than I am used to. The polycrylic sands really smooth. I don't know if it's the weather or if it's just the product. So I am noticing that it's really building up a lot more than sanding. But it still did a great job even when I got to the steel wool to smooth the rest of the piece down to knock down that shine. So 
it's just to let you know if you're going to switch over like I'm trying it out too, just cost efficient. I'm going to go in with the air compressor and blow all that sanding dust that I created that was left behind before I move on to waxing. So to finish these black pieces up, I'm just going in with some Waverly antiquing wax on a piece of drop cloth rag, whatever you have, and just wiping it on. I absolutely love how this seals that black in. I love how it pops where I distress the piece. I just love how it richens up that black tone. Take another rag and wipe off any excess. So now I'm going to layer this little beaded mirror up. It's taking minimum paint, so I'm just going to go in with some of this mineral Waverly chalk paint also and just dab around, just giving this just more of some definition in these little beads. And if you notice with the other coat of paint, when I first started painting this piece, I forgot to put it on a turntable. Just so much easier to put a piece like this while you're trying to work that 360 and working around it to have it on a turntable. So if you do not have one and you are a flipper or just making something for yourself, there are a couple bucks at the thrift store. Now for this little hand and hearth mirror, I'm just going to go in with some of this Jolie black wax. I'm just going to keep it that modern look that it already is without, I don't want to add that antiquing wax, which to me take it into a different look. So I'm just going to finish this off. I just steel wooled it. I didn't want to distress any of the areas. I just want to seal that paint in with a little bit of this Jolie wax. And I noticed that this is very pigmented. So I, a little bit goes a very long way. And then I do really go back in and wipe a lot of it off. So now that that antiquing wax is dry on this frame, I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly white wax. You can see all those little crevices and you can actually see where some of the previous person who stripped all that white paint off or the whatever paint color it was off, you can see some of that detail. So I want to go in with one of these little paint brushes and really go into all these little cracks and really just make those shine. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch on, well, you know, whatever it grabs on and then wipe off any extra. I want those lines to pop. So now I'm back to my second coat of the Rust-Oleum paint, that white linen. So this is a chalk paint. So I have learned People have shared with me experiences that I it's best to keep your brush wet with this Rust-Oleum one. So what I do is I dip it in a little bit of water, dip it in a little paint, and then brush it on or opposite way, depending on how. You can kind of feel how it's going on if you need it to be more watered down or not. But just love, I for distressing a piece the, and all these details on this type of frame, this will be my always my go-to because it just distresses so easy and brings out those beautiful details on these frames. So unfortunately, I thought that that mineral just popped a little too much white. So now I'm going in with some of the Waverly antiquing wax and then doing that same dabbing technique. Every DIY, every craft is kind of an experiment. So what I always say is just keep doing something until you love it. This was a thrifted piece, so I'll just keep working on it until I love it. That We all got all the coats to cover, what we are happy with on these frames. We're going back in with just wet wipes, just some wet wipes and a paper towel, keeping the wet wipe wet and then just rubbing it on any of that detailed area to show that black through. With sealing that black paint in with that clear coat just really makes, and this Rust-Oleum paint, distressing so easy it's so easy to distress a piece like this so what the it's doing I'm at, we're just rubbing it Chris is rubbing on where the detail areas are and then the paper towel because it's wet it kind of leaves a gray cast resin film I guess let's call it over it and so the paper towel is just taking that moisture that gray so then it's just that nice black underneath and then after they are all dry they need to be sealed in and definitely with some type of a clear coat since you see that it water took the paint off if you don't seal this in it'll constantly coming off and for us we're just going back to that clear coat of rust-oleum that's <laughs> kind of smelly stuff so make sure you're ventilated and have a mask on i know i'm repeating myself but don't try wax i the first time i used this stuff i used 
just my natural Varathane wax on it, and it was just distressing the piece even more. So we're always constantly learning. For this flowered mirror frame, I really would have loved to done it in chalk paint, but it wasn't really was it really worth the time of getting a sprayer out and trying to spray it with chalk paint? Too much detail to try to hand paint this in white. So I just want a little bit of detail. I just want a little bit of something, something to pop. So I'm just actually mixing up some of this Waverly ink chalk paint and then some of the Waverly antiquing wax. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub it in on the entire piece and then quickly just wipe it off. I just want it to stain it just a little bit. I just want to make it look a little bit aged, not just be plain white flowers. Now to go back in and just give it a little bit more of an antiquing. I didn't want to make it brown, that's why I didn't want to use that antiquing wax. So I'm just going in and swimming with this Varathane finishing wax and a little bit of this gold metallic paint. It's kind of, I'm kind of making my own gilding wax, I will say. So I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to go around and I'm going to brush it all on and I'm going to go back through and brush it off just enough just to give it a little bit of something something to pop some of those details now it's time to reveal what is underneath so let's hope that i did a good tape job that i have minimal cleanup underneath this contact paper and tape well i didn't plan on getting my face and my camera and my tripod all on this video but you know when you're doing mirrors it's it's reflection so now i'm going in with a little bit of that scraper that i got from harbor freight just to get any of that extra paint that build up just along those edges before adding any water to this mirror i'm going to blow off any of those little pieces that i made from scraping off the mirror remember that could be chalk paint so i could be just smearing a whole bunch onto the mirror so I just absolutely love Norwex cloth for cleaning mirrors, windows, so you just use your vial cloth that is all wet, just wet everything down, and then you go back in with the glass cleaning cloth. No chemicals needed. I absolutely love that. If you all noticed on the back of some of these mirrors, they were missing a backing. I don't know what happens to it, but I like to replace it just to make the piece look clean. So this is just some brown paper. You can use the dollar store one, just this paper, size appropriate, and some hot glue just to glue it on. Find the easiest way to cut off the excess is just using a X-Acto knife that's slightly tipped towards the outer edge. That way that you're not cutting it straight up and down so it's not shown behind. And we do add hangers to the mirrors. Just I think that helps the buyer out that they don't have to worry about that. And then when it comes to a hanger, we use these eyelet that we get off hangers that we get off Amazon pack of a hundred and some barn fencing wire seems to be very strong doesn't seem to break very easily so it's nice and strong when it comes to these heavy mirrors so the one thing that we do do is crisscross one hanging system going one way and one hanging system going the other way just because a mirror can be hung either way and that they are very heavy items just just nice for the buyer to have the option.
So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what was your favorite and did we inspire you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. I thank you so much for watching today's video and if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new to our channel and checking out the content for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell. Thanks again for watching.